Good evening and welcome to Hungry Reports, Start of Public Media and Once Foreign Language News Hour. I'm Cenge Gabriela Iboya with today's news from Hungry in the Carpathian Basin. Let's begin. The increased police and civilian patrol of several counties in the southern part of the country has begun. The three-day action aims to curb illegal migration. As the number of migrants trying to enter Hungary from Serbia and Romania has once again increased significantly in recent weeks. Authorities were sent to the Hungarian-Croatian and Serbian border crossing point on the weekend to observe the areas where illegal border crossings have been witnessed in the past. Police and civil guards patrol the area together, the line of the Danube, the roads leading into the country, the woods and the farms in the area. We increase the sense of safety of those living here. People feel safer if they see more civil guards, policemen and soldiers contributing to border control, a civil guard said. 115 civil guards are taking part in the three-day operation. The increased control, besides Bachkishkun County, expands to the areas near the borders of Chongrad and Bekish counties. The number of police and civil guards is doubled by the joint service, so they can overlook a larger area. A civil guard and a policeman or a policeman and two civil guards form a patrol unit and they perform their duties in abandoned areas and farms, Shandor Chorba explained. Clothing left behind by migrants was found by patrollers in the woods near Botonya, a town in southeast Hungary. As they thought the trespassers still might be in the area, they decided to look around carefully. There is currently a joint operation of civil guards from six different settlements, border authorities and policemen. This means there will be a continuous civil guard service for three days, Istvan Tuchani said. According to our network's knowledge, the reason this action is being carried out now is because 550 illegal migrants had entered Romania in recent weeks, and their majority is most likely heading towards Hungary. Thousands attended the National Modern Factories program yesterday. The goal, which has been the same for many years, is to establish a direct relationship between strong Hungarian companies and Hungarian people. Laszlo Parkridge, Minister of Innovation and Technology, said that a young visitor to a modern factory could be inspired for a future career choice and those already working might be encouraged to try a new career. The creation of huge crampons, herons and heavy-duty machines could be seen during the night of modern factories at one of the factories in Erdőtelek. The machines were an interest to even the smallest visitors. He's really interested in crampons and cranes, this is why we came here today, this father said. According to the organizers, the process of machining tools and components is worth getting to know as soon as possible for anyone who wants to work in this industry. These young pre-career students and elementary school children should get to know the profession and learn what it takes to become a welder, a locksmith or a machinist, the CEO of the company said. Engine parts, self-made drones and complex machining processes. This is one of the engine part factories in Zolaegerszeg, where one could get to know everything about the construction of an engine. I like things made from metal and machines and of course I love motors the most, this boy said. The Hungarian economy has been one of the most dynamically developing economies on the continent since 2010, said the Minister of Innovation and Technology at the Knorr Bremse Brake System LTD's factory in Kecskemét. The Night of Modern Factories is a program that tries to create the connection needed to allow partially Hungarian-owned companies to face what a modern manufacturing base is all about when it comes to how robotics and artificial intelligence will fundamentally change our lives, Laszlo Parkovic explained. The minister said that the government's goal is to make Hungarian-owned small and medium-sized enterprises the backbone of the Hungarian economy. Street accidents, spinal cord injuries and advanced resuscitation. Such and similar tasks had to be solved by medical students during the semester practice exam of the Special Medical and Rescue Group at the University of Debrecen. The training builds on the experience of professionals working in war and disaster situations. Precise fixing can be a matter of life and death for a person with spine injury or someone rescued from a pit. This was one of the practical tasks of the Debrecen Ambulance Group at their exam. Medical students also performed in a lifelike situation how one has to react if a patient under shock becomes dangerous to himself or to the public. I think it's especially important for a doctor to prepare for these emergency and stress situations. As a medical student, it is hard to imagine that in just a few years' time, I will be the one who has to help in these situations, said the student. The Special Medical and Ambulance Group of the Debrecen University, also called DECOM, has been providing training to students for years. 
They prepare prospective doctors to be able to help the injured under extreme circumstances as well. For example, resuscitation without any equipment is also part of their training, just as emergency care. Any time in our lives we can get into a situation where we have to act immediately. This training largely contributes to developing skills for immediate reaction, Brigitta Nemet said. Dekom has been working throughout the world in war-torn areas and those hit by natural disasters for one and a half decades. They've incorporated the experience they gained there in their practice-focused training, as they consider it important for a doctor to be able to perform well outside of the hospital too. The knowledge a student gains during his or her six years of study is completely different when used in real life under stress. During the training we place emphasis on practice and students can learn through simulations what we have accumulated in our 16 years of experience, the president of DECON said. Every year 100 students can participate in the special training. The seventh annual sports gala of the Counterterrorism Center is currently being held in the capital's Bork Hall. In addition to tech employees, soldiers, police, paramedics, firefighters and NAV personnel will also showcase their skills in different styles such as karate, judo and kickboxing. The gala also serves charitable purposes as visitors can donate money to the Betesda Children's Hospital. Matches followed each other from 10 in the morning at the 7th Budo and Martial Arts Gala organized by the Counterterrorism Center at Budapest Spok Stadium. <laughs> Athletes of the Ministry of Interior's Law Enforcement Department and contestants of the Parliamentary Guards, the National Tax and Customs Administration, the Defense Forces and the National Ambulance Service competed in the ring. Preparations were especially difficult for the participants. We of course simultaneously have to perform at our job. This is especially difficult since we have to be present physically and mentally as well, this policeman said. In the past, these competitions only took place among the police. However, the scope of participants has expanded. A lot more contestants have signed up this year compared to last year, so we can say the event is high quality and many competitors represent themselves in various genres, this trainer said. The competition also showcases fighting capacity and the stamina of national professionals. Entrance to the martial arts gala was free, but just like in previous years, donations for the Bethesda Hospital were collected. A few years ago we collected money for a mother's center, and this year once again the money will be used for a good purpose, either for equipment or for enlarging wards. The board of the hospital will decide and inform us. But one is for sure the money is for a good cause, the director general of the counterterrorism center said. After the first qualifying rounds the finals were organized in the evening. Once again Dutch K1 legend Peter Aritz participated in the event this year as an honorary guest. I think it's a good thing what they do. They do wrestling, they do kickboxing, they do a lot of things. I think to protect the people in the country, it's really good to do. It's a good thing. You should do it in Holland too, but it's not like this. <laughs> this year's best contestants will receive medals, trophies and belts in four categories. K1, Karate, Grappling and Judo. This weekend, geese will take centre stage in Shio Fox Main Square. Thanks to the restaurants around Lake Balaton, visitors can taste a variety of goose dishes and, of course, fine Hungarian palinka and new wine can also be enjoyed. The aim of the cosy, free family festival is to attract more visitors to the shore of Lake Balaton in the autumn, showing that the region still has plenty of programmes throughout colder months. The inner lake of Tihan is only 100 metres from Lake Balaton, rising 25 metres above the level of Lake Balaton in the middle of the peninsula. According to experts, it is one of the most beautiful fishing waters in the country, with an unparalleled fauna and special vegetation. Hundreds of thousands of tourists visit it every year. The inner lake of Tihan is open all year round. And that's all for now, but don't forget, you can catch Hunger Reports every night after 11 o'clock news and online as always. Do stick around and watch our German, Russian, Chinese language news. Thank you for watching and have a lovely evening.